Welcome to TechScene.tv. Welcome to a new episode of TechScene TV. We're at HPE GreenLake, uh, HPE Discover. And we're going to talk about GreenLake. Um, with us is uh, Varma Kuna Paraju. He's SVP and GM Cloud Platform and OpsRamp at HPE. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk about o OpsRamp because he's also the previous uh, CIO of OpsRamp. Right? CEO. CEO. Yeah. Okay. With me, of course, is my uh, dear colleague, Sander. Yeah. Um, Actually, quite. I look, I look forward to this because I think OpsRamp was one of the smartest acquisitions that HPE made in the past couple of uh, couple of years. I think Morpheus is also a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've, yeah, but I mean, this is a, this is, this is more fundamental, I think. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So welcome to the show. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah. And thank you for having me. Yeah. So you you were the CEO of OpsRamp when HPE bought OpsRamp, right? Correct. Correct. So how has how have the uh, the past two years been if, uh, from an OpsRamp perspective? Fantastic, in my view, you know, because HPE had the DNA of ITOM. They are the mother of ITOM, to be honest. Yeah. With you. Mm -hmm. They were the inventor of IT operations management, you know, 15, 20, 25 years ago with their acquisitions of, you know, both in-house in open view mm -hmm. and then, you know, they acquired Mercury, they acquired, you know, Opsware, you know, they, they built this yeah. whole stack and, and the fundamentals of IT changed during the last 20 years, you know. Yeah. There are no more four million four year, you know, integrate implementations of those ITOM tools. Yeah. The modern ITOM tools are, you know, more cloud native and you know more and more now yeah. AI native. That, that's what Opstream brought to the table, probably then. Yeah, yeah, and we are a true hybrid, multi cloud, multi vendor observability platform. Yeah. So from our ground inception, we always believed that, you know, enterprise IT needs full visibility of their entire IT stack, yeah. and no enterprise IT stack is homogeneous. Yeah. So I, I actually thought the observability part of OpsRamp was, especially the agnostic observability part, uh, and also networking and all that stuff, because it's been integrated into HP Aruba networking as well, right? So yes. Over the past year, so I thought, always thought the observability part was the most interesting part about OpsRamp, at, at least concerning the the acquisition. Oh, absolutely. You know, we we have uh, in depth uh, observability, not just metrics, logs, traces, but also being able to give a true AI on top of it uh, for for customers yeah. to kind of do root cause analysis and 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 that capability of uh, observability beyond just yeah. getting the signals, but more importantly, in interpreting those signals to kind of find the root cause. Yes. Actually, when it comes to the key message of this of this HP Discover show, it's agentic and green lake intelligence and all and all and all that stuff. The the work that OpsRAM and the rest of that uh, Green Lake platform, or whatever you want to call it, does the foundational stuff is really important, right? Yes, yes. I think you know, treat Green Lake intelligence as a framework, yeah. and you know that framework will allow you know being able to kind of make IT to be proactive and and move the needle in 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 a direction where you know more and more stuff can be automated, more and more stuff can be agent driven. In in you know, it's a crawl walk run phase. You know, you may not, you know, completely eliminate human in the loop from the day one, but it is a journey to get there. And there are cases that we kind of solve without agent in the loop, like what Aruba is demonstrating with their agentic, um, you know, mesh. Uh, mesh and agentic um, resolution of certain cases. And but when you do bring the observability of uh, not just network, but the storage and compute and application footprints. And being able to solve that, you know, in an intelligent way is where the Green Lake intelligence is going to take. Does the HP Info side play a huge role in this because it has a lot of data about how hardware is operating and software is running, and it's, it's a giant day database with a lot of valuable data. I'm guessing. Yeah. So, yes, the answer is yes. Um, if you look at domain-specific AI, you know. There is a domain-specific AI on networking, domain-specific AI around data and storage, and there is domain-specific AI around how applications and application-related things are working together. If you bring all of the domain-specific AIs into a, a, a full-blown Green Lake intelligence where you are now multi-domain, multi-vendor, and bringing all of that framework together to bring 
efficiencies for the IT operations teams. Yeah. Mean time to detect, mean time to repair, and and ultimately giving outcomes that the business is calling from IT. And you said it's a high hybrid cloud approach in the beginning. So you also monitor still the public clouds or yeah. The the intelligence piece and the operations observability piece, as well as the orchestration piece that comes from Morpheus and OpsRamp, all of them are multi vendor and multi cloud. So we integrate to public clouds as well. Okay. All hyperscalers. So all the investments are not only going to GreenLake, but also still to the public cloud support to to keep monitoring and automating that. Yeah. So how much how much of sorry uh, how how much of this um, multi-vendor um, story is actually, is, is actually, I mean, it's true, I know, <laughs> you, you you do support all the vendors, but how, how deep can you go into all those vendors? What are the limitations of of, of, of something like OpsRamp in terms of how, how much data can you get out of all those competing and different um, environments? Great questions, both of them. So I think, you know, to answer the first part of your thing, the Goal and vision for our GreenLake intelligence is to ultimately deliver enterprises' cloud operating model. Their cloud operating model consists of hybrid, you know, which they have probably in their edge locations, their on-prem locations, and then they have data centers, and they may have workloads in the public cloud. So the vision behind our GreenLake platform ultimately is to deliver a, a cloud operating model for any enterprise. Mm -hmm. So really calls for being able to kind of deliver and integrate to all the estates and the assets that the enterprise carries. To answer your qu second part of the question, uh, the integrations are very deep. You know, in some cases, it's based on, you know, open APIs to those, you know, those infrastructure elements, you know, whether it is, you know, SMI, SMI, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, SNMP, WMI. So in some of those cases, you do protocol level, but in some cases, you have to do native API integrations yeah, to those infrastructure yeah. elements, and we do that. We continue to maintain that. Yeah, and do you think, that, do you feel or do you notice that the, the sentiment is changing now that you're part of, of HPE, that maybe some, some things aren't possible anymore now that you used to be able to do? In terms of integrations with 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 competing products and platforms, quite contrary, actually. You know, there is we are actually doubling down our support to other vendors besides HPE because you know we recognize the enterprise yeah. needs that uh, that stack. So we continue to maintain the three thousand plus integrations that we carried from OpsRamp, and uh, and we continue to do. And same thing with Morpheus. Morpheus ability to do the cloud orchestration, you know, whether it's VMware, you know, native hypervisor that we are going to kind of uh, promote now, you know, with VM essentials and public cloud assets, right? Yeah. We are continuing our journey and we're not, we're not, we're not slowing down that multi-vendor support. And um, Morpheus and OpsRamp are two different products that, 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 got, that got bought by HPE. Do you see them merging into one in the future or do you think it will be Standalone product that integrate very well with yeah. each other. The answer to that is basically they solve two different use cases. In one case, we do deep observability, you know, and that's where OpsRamp is focused on. Uh, Morpheus will continue to evolve its roadmap, both from a provisioning and orchestration layer, but also become private cloud control plane for the entire HPE's cloud. Mm -hmm offerings mm -hmm. and you saw that in the press release so those two products will continue to evolve for what they are really meant for uh, how we bring them together is in the form of cloud ops suite that we mm -hmm. we announced today you know where the ability to do day zero day one provisioning and orchestration day two observability and being able to protect through zerto you know on those things that's where we are going to bring them together for enterprises to consume so as a suite. So what's the what's the added benefit of actually taking taking it as a suite instead of sort of only doing one of those components? So only having ops ramp and combine it with your own stuff. Uh, so because there is there is a platform play at, going on here to a certain extent as well, right? So you want to you want to tell people, look, it's better together, but still it's still you can also still buy it separately. So what's the 
what's the added benefit of actually doing the three things in the in the, in the suite in the cloud of suite together? Uh, the fundamental thing there is the ability for an enterprise not to worry about how much of this I need to get, how much of you know um, the other one that I need to get. So the suite really allows. Um, a, a, a scalable model for, you know, I have more workloads that I need to observe. So you can consume one of them much more mm. and, you know, you can may, you may consume one of them a little less. So flexibility for consumption model and, and potentially draw down your commits is, is very, very beneficial, number one. Um, Agentic AI is a big part of the cloud ops. Um... Are you handing over your 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 controls to the agentic AIs now, or how 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 should an IT administrator see see this? Yeah, I think you know the the whole framework around the agentic thing is that you know the ability to bring a mesh where you can bring the intelligence, where you can integrate through MCP, you know, and an ability to kind of go and talk, you know, MCP through. A protocol to go and invoke an API, and on a like sim simple example is on X ten thousand, you can go and give me the capacity of what the storage is, mm -hmm. and use that um, result to be able to kind of make a reasoning on it to how much I need to provision. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where the actual intelligence of bringing these multi-domain things can come together to deliver. So to answer your question. The ability to kind of bring that intelligence in a in a mesh of so then it's more like a, like an assistant, um, but in the future you may see something with observability and trigger an action that AI will solve. Or is that yeah. too much in future? Thinking? It's a journey. It's a journey. It's a journey. Today, the root cause and the copilot that we do uh, through uh, for for root, probable root cause or probable root cause to a real root cause mm -hmm. analysis is a journey, right? So once you know that, you know, there are certain actions that you could, without a human in the intervention, human in the loop can be executed, you know, the agents can potentially perform those actions. They could be simple actions like, you know, provision and extra, you know, um, uh, resources that you need yeah. for your workload to perform. That could be automated. But on the other hand, if there is a, a critical action that needs to be validated, a human can be brought into the loop and, and made sure that the human is making a decision, a human operator equipped with all the intelligence that we gathered across metrics, logs, and traces and analyze that data and present it to the human operator to be able to kind of equip him yeah. to make yeah. a decision. But then, you need to, then you need to decide which of those things need a human in the loop and which Correct. don't, right? And that's and I think that's going to be quite an interesting um, discussion. Dis discussion sure. yeah. Because for some people, because if you look, if you really look into agentic and it is, it is about uh, automating workflows and, and, and it's, it's the next step in automation to a certain extent. But still, I think a lot of companies, because a lot of companies are actually using a lot of these things, right? If you use a platform to like Pulumi or something to, to, to build your uh, application infrastructure, you just select something and it builds everything. And that's, that's, that's also sort of agentic before it was actually fashionable. Um, so the, 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 it has a very deep impact on every layer of your organization. And I, I, I'm really curious about the, 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 the discussions about what will be agentic, what will be autonomous and um, how we, how we decide where to go. How do you, how do you see that? Yeah. You know, if you, if you see the journey six months ago to today, it's like a leap forward on what took place around the whole agentic frameworks and how people are using those agentic frameworks for keeping sometimes human in the loop, sometimes, you know, doing automation tasks executed. But I think my view is the maturity in the next year or year and a half will allow us more and more tasks to be automated where the, mm -hmm. the pendulum will swing more and more towards potentially getting human optional. Today, if you ask me, today, human in the loop is still real. And how, how much of this is a cultural thing? 
because how, how much pushback are you expecting from yeah from... it's not just yeah. cultural alone it's also about confidence that you can make decisions yeah. you know the reasoning the memory of the agent being able to kind of memorize you know what this kind of an incident took place in the last 3 4 months this many times and i remembered what exactly took place in those things and being able to reason on that is where the models needs to evolve where the in there where the fine tuning uh, of those models with the actual sure. uh, force of actions that took place needs to take place mm -hmm. so i don't think it is just not the confidence alone it is the ability for the models to also evolve to a place where the human can trust them but who will decide when a human is in the loop because now you can say oh we're keeping a human in the loop in most cases but like you said, if things develop and your team gets more confident in its yeah. models and its AI and its agentic AI, you might decide, oh, we don't need a human in the loop. We're so confident when we see these kind of errors or problems or hardware uh, faults, we can just solve yeah. it by running. And, uh, and it's also the reason you're, you're investing in things, right? So yeah. you're investing in things to, to make life easier for yourself. So, the, the, yeah, so yeah. to his point. The, the answer that Curve is where, you know, you potentially do automation around standard operating procedures, you know, um, run books and standard operating procedures are the first low-hanging fruit for being able to kind of make the agents execute because you know you are going to execute with a with a human there and now you, you kind of make the agent to execute those standard operating procedures. But to do a full-blown root cause analysis and making an ultimate action around a full stack is probably a journey that a human operator will be involved and a journey, in the near future. Yeah, and a journey that needs uh, the best possible data. And that's obviously where, yeah. uh, from the beginning, where OpsRAM comes in. If you, if you can base it on sound, on sound judgment and sound data, then that makes a lot more sense than just yeah, uh, automating for the care for the sake of automating, right? That's right. Our uniqueness is we are collecting incredible amount of intelligence and data for that intelligence um, from real use cases because of our software assets being multi-vendor, multi-cloud, and enterprises are collecting trillions of data samples, and those samples will ultimately make uh, the intelligence layer much more powerful. So let's let's hope. They they deliver on the uh, on the quality of the of the data. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Roma, for joining us on TechSign TV. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. We did. Um, we'll be back with more videos from uh, HPE Discover. Uh, keep watching. Thank you for watching TechScene TV, the channel about enterprise technology that brings you IT insights and analyses from events all around the globe. We cover everything, everywhere. Visit techscene.eu for more written in-depth articles and analysis, or keep watching techscene.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels and share your favorite videos with your colleagues. We'll see you soon.